seven coming out, coming out of Houston, uh, Texas. Uh, we got Sid and Greg talk more about uh, their design philosophy. Uh, we'll be checking out some of their CAD uh, that they have and then uh, some uh, mechanisms, prototypes, that sort of thing. So, guys, why don't you introduce yourselves? Let us know what you do in the team, and then we got a lot of cool stuff to cover with the Disco Bots today. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Siddhartha Garwala, um, but you can just call me Sid. I, I'm the design lead and I work on mechanical and kind of work on basically whatever the team needs to work on. Uh, I'm Greg. Uh, I'm kind of mech lead I, for this team. We're just kind of, I just kind of do, same, same as said, I just kind of do whatever, whatever's needed. You get stuff done, right? Right. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, so r run us in uh, through your team. So looking, uh, we're you know eclipsing week three, going into week four of the build season here. Uh, tell us a little bit about your design philosophy, and then we'll be showing off some of your CAD work. So one of the really quick, right when right at kickoff, what we realized was this game was uh, relatively simple, and with the protected scoring uh, areas. We, we need to focus on agility and consistency in order to reduce our cycle times, less, less so on des dexterity and scoring under defense. So we plan on having a very, very fast robot this year. So how, how so fast is very fast? Uh, we're planning on using L2 Swerve from SDS, which clocks in around 9 miles an hour, which is plenty fast for a 54-foot field. Anything, um, anything else from so, your, uh, your design philosophy you're looking at uh, for the charge up game? So, yeah, we decided that uh, we, we decided to go with Swerve this year. Uh, really, it's our first year going with Swerve. And the reasoning behind that is we realized that the charge station and like the community scoring area are pretty cramped, like in terms of like the amount of space you're given to maneuver your robot. And we thought that the ability to strafe and not need to turn would greatly reduce cycle times, not just for us, but also for our alliance, because it would reduce like traffic jams and possible issues that could come with multiple robots in that area at the same time. Um, so we, we've been working on like a mini swerve kind of with our design ideas. Um, and I'll show you that. And this is just for our programming team so that they can kind of work on stuff. And the goal for this was to make it as small as possible while having all of the FRC related electronics on it. So it's actually as a frame perimeter of 80 inches, which makes it pretty small and easy to carry around and test in school settings and without like large open areas. But your real your real robot's going to be slightly bigger than that. That's just your, for your test chassis, right? Yes, our um, our real robot will follow the Everybot chassis uh, shape, so it'll be twenty two by twenty twenty two by twenty eight. Well, let's go into some of your CAD work uh, that you have on there. Uh, you mentioned everybody. We teased a little bit before on here. So let's uh, bring it up on screen and uh, kind of walk us through your progress so far and kind of some of your, deci your decision making behind different parts of your robot as well. Right. So uh, right on the onset of the season, after we figured out our priorities, uh, we started creating some concepts for arms. So after looking at a bunch of different concepts, by that time, everybody was released. And after looking at that further, we realized that, hey, the every rot is already out there. It's simple. And we think that the time we, we move, the time we allocate from CAD and ARM design can be better allocated to uh, programming. So we use a, just the standard every rot ARM mounted to our swerve drive. So we were we were originally planning on just maintaining the entire everybot assembly, but making it a little bit smaller um, width-wise so that it would fit in into our swerve drive without clipping modules and stuff. But we realized that doing that would require a lot of extra superstructure on top of the modules, because if you've seen the normal everybot, you can see that it mounts to the very front and very back of the robot, which are where 
our uh, storage drive modules are located. So instead, we decided to work on a kind of superstructure that could replace that. And what we came up with was a combination of two by one and one by one uh, box tubes. So in this case, we're using max tube with a couple of gussets for bracing and attachment. Um, the other thing that we wanted to keep in mind was stock because um, as a lot of people have been trying to get their hands on the everybody like materials, um, the, the, the Rev Max planetary like gussets have been out of stock. So we've modified it to be at a 45 degree angle. Uh, like the, the whole blue beam is at a 45 degree angle, which allows us to use other gussets. Greg, how do you how do you break that down in your mind uh, for the team kind of doing a different modification uh, for what they're looking for? Uh, I mean, I think it's I think this is like ultimately a great use of the Everybot project, right? I mean, um, in the the goal with Everybot is not just to say, hey, build this robot and just have a bunch of cloned robots, but I think that robot in three days, the Everybot and all that stuff is all the same. It's like if you can inspire and learn a lot from it um, and make it your own i think that that's you know giving a really great opportunity for teams and so i mean i love what you're doing i mean so you see you identified as a swerve drive you wanted to do that something you had done previously and then you're using the stuff that everybody put out there but you're making it your own and i, I think that that will really probably play to your benefit um how far along are you in terms of actually building this robot we've gotten most of the a lot of the EveryBot like components we have already uh, acquired, so all the bearing blocks, b bearings, uh, intake wheels, everything, uh, short of the the more s specialized stuff like, for example, our max tube order is still being shipped. Uh, we've all acquired most of the parts, and then today we've started riveting the main arm together. I, I like somebody, uh, AGB15 in our live chat posted that, the what they call Swerve Rebot, uh, saying they're going to win an event calling it now. And I agree. I think like these modified, like every bots, that, specifically the ones that have Swerve, but then have their own modifications, like Greg was saying, I think these are extremely viable in this game. And I think we're going to see uh, teams being alliance captains and teams uh, uh, winning events uh, with cool modification of these. So I, I can't wait to see on your guys' end. Is there anything else that you're looking at uh, having modified uh, from the design or, or from your own philosophy? looking forward uh, so one of the things that we're gonna look to add is a ground intake onto the everybot arm so what we realized was the everybot isn't able to pick up cargo on the ground so what we're with our serve swerve drive we're able to mount our ground intake behind opposite to the arm while like still allowing the driver to control the robot quite well so Although it's not pictured in camera right here, where we might probably we might add a ground intake opposite the arm. And what's the what's the purpose of the, the ground intake? So you can you can run game pieces for your alliance partners or for exactly. to hand them off or what what's what's your thinking there? So it's a it's a combination of things. Uh, the first thing is we feel like in early season competitions, especially at like regionals and in qualifying matches. Um, there'll be teams that are dropping cubes and cones and the time that they would lose trying to pick those up and score might be uh, too much. So they would just leave them on the field, kind of abandoning cargo. And we could just scoop those up and that would be another fast cycle way for us to score points. And if we find a way to uh, score those into higher goals, that would be ideal. But in the present case, it's pretty easy to intake a cube or a cone that's tipped over with like an intake that already exists. A lot of the RI3D teams and also Spectrum 3847 have shown that simple like laser cut plates are really with rollers are really effective at picking up tipped cones and like cubes that are on the ground. And then being able to just drop those into a low goal would be another really big benefit off of the normal EveryBot design. Uh, in addition to that, the during a taunt, right after a Thomas period, there's those four uh, cargo that's set up on your side of the the field, and 
like some team showed, which they made a team update. They made a update on this where you can't you can't control more than two at any point, right? So because some teams were uh, think of ideas where they just take scoop all four cargo at yeah. autonomous. So something having the ability to pick up off the ground is I think quite advantageous for us. I love the idea of, of that, that you don't necessarily need to have the ability to pick this up from the ground and score on higher end levels. I think from a game strategy and actually just the simplicity of your robot, I think it's kind of a cool uh, aspect to be able to put on your robot and not add too much complexity uh, to what it is as well. Um, I know you guys have some uh, mechanisms there also in person as well. Uh, can you show us off a couple of your prototypes or anything that you're, that you're working on? Um, so one of the uh, other things that we realized was that building and programming might come at odds during the season, um, mainly due to the fact that Swerve is going to take up a lot of programming time and resources. So what we decided to do was create dummy Swerve modules, which are just four-inch Omni wheels inside laser cut like wood uh, brackets mounted to two by ones. And this is actually our full dimension chassis. We've mounted uh, some old bumpers to one end of it. And what that allows us to do is we can build on top of this and then either swap on swerve modules at a later time or just take the mechanism and put it on our actual chassis with the swerve modules. So that would allow us to work on programming as well as like build and, des like build and design at the same time. And that would just maximize the time that our programmers have to tune stuff, which, as we said, was one of our main goals at the start of the season. Yeah, that's that's an incredibly clever technique that I've never seen before. But uh, yeah, I mean, a lot a lot of times I think that teams do end up um, waiting too long to get the whole thing together to give it to their pro to their programmer. So even giving part of the mechanism or part of the drivetrain earlier on is going to be you know do really well for you. But that's a very very clever method for that. Thank you. Uh, anything else for you guys as we have like a minute or two left to talk about either things that you want to show off either in person or maybe looking to the future in the next couple of weeks too? Um, uh, we, we, well, we, uh, well, one of the things that we've thought about but haven't really like properly considered, I guess, is a way to launch cubes. Um, we noticed that in autonomous, like an every bot would probably able only be able to score one cube because of the non inability to pick up off of the ground. So uh, launchers like the ones demonstrated by Spectrum uh, in their build blog uh, seem really interesting because they're not only able to like shoot during autonomous, but say you you're like running quick cycles back and forth for an alliance and you have to just throw them a cube, you could probably like give the cube to them by just launching them, launching it while you're kind of in contact with the community. Because if any part of your robot is over that line, you'd be considered in the community. And the ability to launch things might just give you another leg up over competition. Well, DiscoBots, thank you so much for uh, showing off uh, your progress so far. I love some of the uh, concepts you come up with and the thought process to give your programmers more time. I'm sure they appreciate that as well, too. So uh, we'll be checking back with your team uh, after week six, so can't wait to do that and hear more about your progress. Make sure you check out their build blogs uh, as well, too, on Chief Delphi and on the FRC Discord. But good luck, guys. We'll see you back on here in just a few short weeks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.